Welcome on into Barstool Breakfast. I'm Willie Colon, and he is. The great Francini. The one and only. Hi, it's Martin Willie. <laughs> we got Pat on the ones and twos. We got Zion in the house. We got Jesky, and of course, the voice of God. You can't hear him or see him, but he's there. Weekend was good. Another Patriots ring. Saw that coming the entire time. Ring number six. Cousin Zaz hung over. Willie is gone. Francis is tired. Large is tired. It's Monday. Everything's back to normal tomorrow. That's pretty much it. Can we can we do this tomorrow? If I if I if I talk I, each time I talk I feel like I'm gonna like project up or off. I need to stop doing that. You met Wee Man though. I did. It was fucking unreal. And he was just he was just he was I felt bad too. Cause I was like shaking. No, that's the thing. It was like you're big, you really are a big fan of this. Yeah, I I was like sh dude, I was, I cried. And it was so funny because. <laughs> Because there was another, there was another midget, there was another black midget. So there's three of us. Wee man, was he? Was there any part of him that was like, thought it was cool to meet you, given that you're both little people? Uh, was there any connection I on that? I, mean, I was, I was too drunk to figure out. <laughs> to, to, oh. to get those kind of it wasn't like, it wasn't like it, when two. I don't think so. It was, you it was, know, black people were at a frat party. And no, no, no. He was very, like, he was very, hey. he was very mellow. He was very mellow. Because I've always drunk. wanted to be one of those black people. <laughs> nah, it was very he's mellow. He's the only other black guy at the party and says hi. But was, I can't, because then that's black face. So. Very mellow, very. <laughs> Welcome on back to Barstool Breakfast. I'm Willa Cologne and he is... The Great Francini. We got Pat on the ones and twos. We got Jetski in the house. Zada Great and the voice of God is actually gone. I'm terribly oh. sad about this. Uh, and so, here we are. So something happened this morning. What do you got? So I told you I got in late. Get upstairs. Do my... Uh, my usually my same old routine. Put the food down. Put the bag down. Go to the bathroom. Because I usually got P.O. shit. I'm going to put it out there. I just usually got to use the bathroom. Well, I do my business. Can't leave the bathroom. The mm. door is actually locked. I thought Zod and Jeski were fucking with me. Willie, Willie, stop it. We're not being funny, I swear. Not, not at all. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> why is the door locked? As I look down at the handle, there is no handle. It's just one this little, there's no handle to where it should be. I'm like, Za, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go through the door. See, it's even getting. I won't do it. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to save the door and furniture here. Uh, and it's it's checked up on. Five minutes go by, ten minutes. Now I'm starting getting frustrated because my food's getting cold, drinks getting hot. I gotta have a show, so I'm like Jessica. I'm about to go through the door. He's like, "All right, bro, do what you gotta do. Best of luck to you." Go right through the fucking door. I guess do what you gotta do. I, I don't know. Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh my god! Good morning. You see, it's not it's not open for this. But so anybody that's coming in, all the stoolies, or not stoolies, all the employees rather, uh, the, the bathroom's out of order. Mm. Well, it's not out of order, you just can't close the door. I like how the door just says occupied with a fucking piece of cardboard. I see you wearing the cholo shirt. You got your denim. I'm cholo. What's yeah, up? Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just sort of mixing it up. It. Yeah, like getting hard in the yard. Getting hard in the yard. I got a two o'clock appointment. I'm getting one of the teardrops. Nice. Yeah, it's okay. going to be good. Tom yeah. Brady has that. Tom Brady, his kryptonite is Leo. Mine is, is a guy like the greatest quarterback in the world. Yeah. He's he's operating at a high level uh, and to his forties. He's married to a supermodel. He's got a, a you know one for the dick. He's got all these one rings for the dick. that are ro floating around and stuff like that. But uh, he cannot look Leonardo DiCaprio in the eye. No question. And I love that. Fact. And in fact, you know what's even <laughs> worse false. about this is all fake news. Why yeah. is this not? Why is this fake news, Patty? You think that he feels comfortable around Leonardo DiCaprio? No way. Yes. No why? Way. He, Leonardo DiCaprio, I know for a fact, likes to do deviant things to women. So the fact that he had on an island performed the colonoscopy like on the mother of Tom Brady's kids. At some point, a red wine induced colonoscopy, I'm going to call it. What are you talking about? Him and, <laughs> him and Giselle? Look, Tom, Tom Brady, Brady has swooped up this multi million dollar supermodel yep. and married her. I don't, I don't begrudge him, but I'm glad there's one person in the world that Tom Brady 
ain't shit next Look, to him. And Leo that's is Leonardo just, Caprio. he's a poor, washed up actor with one Oscar. Tom Brady is at the peak of his career. He's richer. He has six rings. I mean, I don't what think he's do richer than Leo. Leo. Leonardo Caprio looks great at 45. No question. Or whatever the hell he is. Guy wearing yeah. the fucking baggy t-shirt. We're going to tweet out a picture of the, their bodies. Are you trying to tell me though. as a gay dude that you don't find Leonardo DiCaprio attractive. Right. Maybe 10 years ago. Oh, oh, so you're saying right now Addy. Leonardo DiCaprio is not attractive. I mean, there's, there's plenty Tom of Brady pictures. Tom Brady is more attractive than Leonardo DiCaprio. That's hands down. Oh. Hands down. Oh. You, gotta, you might have to turn in your card. <laughs> right. I don't know who I'm going to tell, but I'm, I'm going to report you to the proper right. gay authorities. No hey, question. Listen, right? Give me some numbers. There's got to be a station downtown somewhere. For that. I just wrote a uh, blog and published it called The Hanging Column of Dick. Ha! What if I took that to? <laughs> Francis, yeah. do you know the difference between making love and having sex? Uh-huh. Do you? Yeah. Uh, okay. One results in a child and the other doesn't. <laughs> okay, that's one way of thinking about it. Sure. Making love is more of a kind of process. You're mm. kissing, caressing, playing mm. on her hair, soft kisses, eyes, contact. Mm. I mean, there's a lot more. I mean, you squeeze on the butt. It's not a slap. There's, there's more of a tenderness to it. Sure. That's lovemaking. I agree. Sex is the equivalent of, I don't know, uh, sticking your dick in a cereal box uh, like Captain Crunch. Ouch. And then just clapping the box together. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> that's sex. What a fun show. We do well. We do have a good show. One of the best. Uh, I think there's an honest conversation to be had. Are you making love or are you having sex? Breaks. Do you, make, difference. do you make love or you have sex? Depends who it is and what the situation. Oh. But there is a difference. Shoot a shoot, I guess. Uh, so, uh, so, are you making love or you have uh, sex? Uh, I make love. Yeah. Go figure. Uh, just kidding. I fuck.